Hello! I'm going to do a quick look at my shared inventory spaces because someone asked. Uh, the first three are our salvage kits, copper, silver, and rune crafter. Uh, these aren't essential, but they are incredibly helpful. Copper fed, I use to break down blues. Silver fed breaks down rares. Rune crafters break down greens. Uh, you can use the mystic salvage kits if you have a bunch of them or a bunch of mystic forge stones. Uh, I go through so many stacks of unid gear that it doesn't really work for me that well, but your mileage may vary. Uh, next up, Portal Tomes. Season 3 will take you to any of the Season 3 maps. Uh, you can buy the Portal Scrolls from each of the respective maps to go into the Tome. Season 4 is similar, however if you have and use the Sun's Refuge scroll, it will also go in this book. Uh, I seem to have disappeared mine before I they added that functionality, so I don't have it. And there's no way to currently get one. Uh, not that I'm ever there. Also, you can uh, go there from a waypoint directly nearby, but it's kind of a bummer to not have the ability to purchase that once you have access to the zone. End of Dragons, uh, Icebrood Saga, Grathmar, Viora, Eye of the North and Drizzlewood, same thing by for gold. Uh, you can buy most of those in Eye of the North if you've unlocked the vendors there. There's Arborstone and Wizard's Tower, which I hope if they add another hub that has a portal scroll, they at least sell us a tome. Maybe they can package some of these together. They take up way too much space. Uh, World Boss Portal Device. It's what's making the threat detected Mega Destroyer attacks in 10 minutes appear. Uh, I got it from someone many years ago and use it to get alts to uh, world events. I don't really need to keep it with me very much. Uh, recharging Teleport to Friend. This is going to get really good in a couple weeks when they change it to a 10 minute cooldown. Right now it has an hour cooldown and that hour does not diminish when you are offline because it's coded as a buff and not a debuff. So a little bit unfortunate, but that's getting changed. It'll be 10 minutes. It'll be usable all the time to get to every event. It'll be great and fantastic. And these are single use teleports to friends which may not have a home at that point. We have our Mislock Sanctuary passkey. It goes to Mislock Sanctuary. Uh, hubs are useful. I think right now if I was buying them, I would buy the fishing one. I am probably buying that the next time it's available. Mislock's great, but it removes Jade Bot buffs, which sometimes suck when you're trying to get around. Uh, EOD metas and you need to go pop in to a bank or something real quick. Uh, that is also solved by permanent mobile crafting station. You click it once, pops up a crafting station. You interact with it, you select which one you want. Uh, it can also be a scribing station, which you can't really find outside your guild hall. Pop that open and you have access to your bank, your mat storage, and your crafting stations. Invitation to the party, I keep it on me all the time because I have an empty space. Uh, you don't have to keep it on you all the time. Uh, Infinite Mist Omni Potion, a uh, fantastic use of a shared inventory slot if you fractal a lot. Uh, I don't fractal as much, but it's always nice to just have it there and then click on a mist lock and have every buff. Never need to carry about potions. Never need to worry about buying potions anymore. We have our white mantle portal device. It lets you be a mesmer. Pop it down. Run a short duration. Pop it again. Take the portal. 
Uh, it is unfortunately on a 30 minute cooldown, but uh, incredibly useful for some fractals to help get around. Uh, if you're running around with friends, it can be limited use Mesmer Portal. Uh, we'll get to this one in a minute. We have common, rare, and normal old unidentified gear. Uh, I keep these in this spot along with scavenger bag. Any open world characters I have do have the scavenger bags from magic trophies. They just accumulate here and you hit a full stack. You can shove them in the inventory or open your crafting station and shove them in there. Let's you just easily deal with stacks of things that otherwise accumulate across multiple characters and you have no easy way to deal with them. Our prototype position rewinder one of the best things in the game. Uh, you can get it in sand swept aisles for very low investment. Pop it by hitting one. You get not too far away but uh, a significant amount away. Press two and you're back where you started. Uh, if you do jumping puzzles or need to do jumping puzzles, uh, get used to this. It will be one of your best friends. If you park alts at chests, uh, get used to popping it at the top of a cliff, jumping down the cliff, opening some chests, and then popping back up to the top. Uh, the duration on it is 30 seconds from when you hit the first. Uh, I believe that was extended somewhat recently. I remember it being, if I had used rewind and then placed a mark that rewind would not be up or that this buff would go away before this was ready and now they're the same duration a uh, feast of birthday cakes i rarely ever use these i don't know why i keep them with me and then we have four gathering tools we have a mining bean with watch knight a uh, slightly better than volatile we have an unbound magic logging pulse with leather worker and then we have our bounty sickle and our volatile sickle depending on what we're doing uh, the glyphs on these two can change to be whatever you need there's there's a monetary version if you want a little bit extra money there's the good old volatile if you just want the guaranteed income of volatility. Uh, I have these because at some point they were significantly better than the alternatives. Well, Watch Knight and Leather Worker were about the same. Uh, there's the absolute best is the snowflake. Every time you make a hit, you get a snowflake, but that's not on a glyph, I don't believe. That is only on the Winter's Day tools, and those are cumbersome to carry too many around of uh, can stash them on an alt I did that a couple years ago I still have some left from there forgot to buy many inventories worth and shuck them away somewhere and I kicked myself a little but I only ever use them in my home instance and I don't have the basic nodes yet and I'm not sure if I'm going to buy the basic nodes unless they're on sale for a great price and not just 20% off and then we have our Lion's Pride, which when I click it, we end up in the original version of Lion's Arch. You can get this from doing season one achievements. Uh, it's interesting to run around in if you've done your personal story and you weren't around when the original Lion's Arch was in the game, you have seen parts of it. You may have been wondering why Lion's Arch looks so different and this is why. Uh, this is the original version. I, I sort of loved the original version. It has a much nicer feel to it than whatever the weird stone and marble version is. It was actually a lot of boats. It felt alive. It still feels alive. There is a unique jumping puzzle in here still, but we have the crafting area you cannot mount and you cannot glide mystic forge wasn't the easiest thing to get around in but it was a lot of fun 
up here is the bank. Feels similar to the bank in New Lion's Arch, uh, with significant differences, of course, in that it's in old on Lion's Arch and has the old motif instead of the stone with overhang. There have been a couple different versions of Lion's Arch. Uh, there was there was this one, then there was the half besieged one, which was in for like a patch or two. The center courtyard is where you can find all of the boats. If I remember correctly, this used to be where people would hang out. Uh, there's a jumping puzzle attached. I don't know if it was an official jumping puzzle, but there was a jumping puzzle tied to jumping around on all of the boats. We have the old portal looking area that wasn't like I'm trying it's been a long time since I've seen the functioning old lion's arch like I know in my head where the old armor vendors are for the dungeons they were up on this ridge and then they moved them and then the map sort of changed and they moved them again some point they were down here like the this isn't a complete replica of lion's arch from what my brain is telling me lion's arch is and it's a little weird every time i come in here like i think like over by the bank there should be more boats and there's not the right boats that are there we'll head down to fort mariner I believe this is the era of, yeah, them lined up here. These are all the dungeon merchants. Again, I remember them being in this area. That might have been during one of the uh, remade Lion's Arches after the initial Karka invasion. Portals to World v. World are still in the same place in this one. The old entrance to Fractals is at the bottom of this hill on a little dock. It was pretty cool when they added that in there. You would see a lot of people hanging out. It's been forever since I've been here. There's the South Sun Gate. I believe this was the Fractal Gate. It is the Fractal Gate, and it still works. I haven't been in this uh, version of Lion's Arch since I got this. And I was like, ooh, I'm just going to run around with a bunch of my characters in here. And I haven't, and it's just eating a shared inventory slot. And the last blank shared inventory slot is when these hit 250. If you have them in a shared inventory slot, they will go in your new shared inventory slot. Whereas otherwise they would go into your inventory. Hopefully that, well, let's see if my other account currently has stuff in its shared inventory slot that I don't. Uh, it doesn't look like it. It does not. Uh, there are other things you can put in here. There's more permanent contracts you can use. Uh, you can put... I've seen some people put the, the different gobblers in there, so they have access to them on all their characters. I have a character specifically for that. Uh, if you do what I do and hoard deluxe gearboxes until you have a full stack and then you open them, you can stuff those in there. But usually only get those on a character you do open world stuff with. You're not just going to get it from opening chests and stuff. Uh, char field homing beacons if you're into drizzle winning. 
might be something you could put there. Uh, way stations absolutely can go there for access across multiple characters if you do stuff on multiple characters. Or you can potentially put stacks of bloodstone, imperial fragments, and that in there. I wouldn't recommend that just because those are material storageable. And then if you have gobblers, you can toss them onto an alt that can eat them and you don't have to worry about them. Uh, hopefully that clears up well, what some of those items are and what you might put in there yourself. I will catch y'all later.